Ever since the creation of video games in the 1950s, and with the release of the first video game console that used cartridges called Channel F in 1976, popularized by the Atari 2600 one year after, companies had always wanted to dive into the video game market for profit on their properties. Yet with a new venture like games, it was very new at the time, and they didn't even know how game development works, what's the goal, how inputs were used, etc. Licensing game had a bad rep for decades because of bad quality, rushed development, popular IPs to sell these things for profit and rate it as one of the worst video games of all time, especially considering they're also called shuffleware, which means that like games were pumped out very quickly with no care or effort into it. Holy shit, it's Spider-Man! It was the 80s, it was a minefield of what games were high quality and which game will break your spirit. E.T. for the Atari was well known for starting the video game crash after 1982, and when profits for video games were plummeting due to the oversaturation of rush and bad video games, it almost looked like video games were no longer going to be a profitable income for anybody. That was until Nintendo started dominating the market with Nintendo's seal of quality that licensed games started to get much better. Not every game though, there was still the Sasha release every day, especially LJN. But the video game business was finally getting get good again. And if it wasn't for Nintendo, we wouldn't still be playing games to this day. But that doesn't mean licensed games weren't always that bad. In fact, some of them were excellent and were remembered much better than anyone expected. Rare Rare started doing a licensed game before Battletoads. And after they were now the sold the Fabulous for Nintendo products, GoldenEye 007 on N64 was a good first person shooter. It's not the best, but everybody remembers how great the game was. It sold so well that it got multiple games based on multiple GoldenEye movies, some were spin-offs, and even got its own spiritual successor called Perfect Dark. It's not only movies that got some great games, TV shows, comic books, and sometimes toy lines were lucky to have some hidden gems. SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, a really good 3D platformer based on a SpongeBob IP, taking your places to recognizable locations from this show. The Simpsons Hit and Run, a GTA clone, is a really great Simpsons video game. It has a bunch of like recognizable areas that you can explore, and even some recognizable characters with really funny lines. But should I even mention Star? Wars, there's a lot of bad Star Wars games, but there are actually a bunch of hidden Star Wars games that are really good, especially in one released by EA in 2019. But sometimes, most properties get good amount of good licensed games, some might get one great game. But sometimes there are most properties where all the games are mostly always bad or just forgotten. Some properties like Garfield were unable to make a compelling video game that anybody would love and remember fondly. Most were made for quick money. Others who are made for young kids don't always make compelling games that keeps them from replaying since they were made as easy as they could be. Easy games can actually be good, and easy games have good gameplay. Yet when there are no challenge, boring level design, or nothing to remember, no one would care to play your game. And in today's subjects, we're going to be taking a look at a game about a certain blue creatures who live in a tiny village in a huge forest. The Smurfs, a comic series that started in 1958 by Pilly Clifford, which became a big phenomenon back in the day, which became the highest grossing media franchise, reckoning in $4 billion in revenue. But not a lot of people in the modern day know anything about the Smurfs. Nobody rarely talks about anything about this franchise, and if people talk about the Smurfs, they only bring up the two two live action movies and maybe the animated movie in 2017. So they're not as big as Scooby Doo or even Spongebob. So when you get a property like the Smurfs, you know that this franchise will get a load of games from different platforms. And just like any other properties, most of these were okay and most are somewhat laughable. But even if the Smurfs games were not as familiar as any other licensed games, it turns out that there is one game that actually, in my opinion, is mostly the best Smurfs game that I rarely hear anybody Praising. And that is the Smash Dance Party, baby! Woo! Let's get that Reaver mode and play that shit over the roof. And play for the job and let the game register the dance movement and break your fucking thing we will do that! Now no! We're not doing that shit here, bitch! We're going through the serious mission with the Smurfs! No dance party shenanigans! This Smurfs game I crowned as the best is Yeah, that's right, Mission Belief! And this one is really good. 
And this is my favorite 3D platformer that I ever played in 2021. And it's not just only that, it fits with the Smurfs very well with the Forge and the Mythical Feet. I was wanting to do and make a video on this game for almost a year and a half after finishing the game for the first time. And since I had wanted to do more content like this, I feel it would be the perfect time to do the video on Mission Fully, talk about what I love and talk about what I don't like about this game. So where do we start with this? I don't know. I don't even know jack shit about the franchise. Now to be honest, I never really got into the Smurfs just like everybody else. I only heard about this franchise from the many reviews who bashed the live actor movie. And even if their video games were brought up, it's one of the dreadful shovelware dancing games or the decent platforming game from way forward. By the way, the Smurfs Dance Party had a really cryptic piracy software that had prevented Dolphin from playing the game. It wouldn't even boot until 2017. That's a fun looked fact from me. I did got a chance to see one of the CGI movies called The Lost Village. It wasn't the best anime movie, but I had a good time watching it. But my true Smurf experience was the newest game in 2021, Mission Fleet. And after I finished the game, I decided to check out some review videos for the game, and to my surprise, there weren't either a ton of videos going in depth about Mission Fleet. I never see any of the big reviewers going full on what the game is all about. So I decided to research some stuff about the company and its developers. I did find some interesting stuff about them, and then after I saw one of writer CX's videos, I now understand why the game fell under the radar. The publisher of this game is a French video game publisher called Mick Awards, and they have been publishing games like licensed games and original games for almost 40 years. And the developers of the game is Osam Studios, a French game developer who has developed a couple of games like Right Night, a couple of Azure's and Obelix games, including two remaster of the old XXL games, and two top down beat up games. And one of them is called XXXL. Like an XXL... GUT! Yeah, I kind of never played most of their games before, but I did got to play two of them from Awesome, the XX2 remaster and Mrs. Relief. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to play the rest of their games after this video, but maybe in the future I might try more of their games. But I did play the XXL2 remaster and thought it was okay. But I do remember the game not running around my old PC, so that will be something fun if I ever do review marathon in the future. But their work on Mission Valif was really well done. And it's a shame that it's not getting covered by most reviewers. Private CX made a video on Spongebob the Cosmic Shake and talking about the unfortunate success that it didn't get. Gang didn't sold very well as it expected. And he believed why that was the case. The Cosmic Shake is mostly a experience of successor to Battleful Bikini Bottom and was marketed as another Spongebob adventure. Even if it was like a multiverse adventure, it's mostly just exploring a different version of the same memorable locations from the show. And there was like no hook that got people to pick this game up, aside from the fact that this is like a sequel to the other Spongebob game that was me made by the same team. And that's kind of like the same thing I thought though that caused Mission Fleet to fly under the radar. But that only makes only a small sense for this game. There was a hook for this game, which is a Smurfs adventure in a 3D space. And as a small creature exploring through the forest uses a spray weapon that will heal infected plants. But sadly, the game didn't get as big as aside from the smaller countries. Okay, if you're a French video game developer and got a chance to work on the Smurfs, this wouldn't be much of a big deal. But when you're looking at the most licensed game that are like Spongebob and realizing that America has the most people that review games that can get huge coverage and make most of the sales, this is literally as big as a town as the Smurfs lives in. Forests are the biggest things that cover most of the areas, and one town can only cover a small amount of the forge which means that it gets forgotten about. The only small amount of outsiders that found it knows about this place. Also, did you know that this is actually the Smurfs' first ever 3D platforming adventure? This is a darn shame, cause this is one of the black sheaves of the Smurfs' licensed game. Luckily enough, I got myself a Steam copy of this game in early 2022 for $10 on Instance Gaming's website. So, I believe this is the perfect time to start going into this game and get sucked into the world of the Smurfs. Let me smurf you the story of the vile leaf. So when we start the game up, a neighbor is giving up a introduction on the Smurfs, the Resident, and the evil sinister Gargamel, brewing up the plan to capture the Smurfs once and for all. 
The narrator also tries to narrate the stories and rhymes. He has smurfed from a book of despair. Uh, sometimes to help him grow pears. He doesn't even rhyme most of the time. After the intro, pop the Smurf steals you and what your objective is. While you have Handy Smurf's new adventure in your back. Then after that, you get to move around a little bit. You can move, jump, and understand that the affected graphs can slow you down if you're not careful. And at the end, you collect your ammo and head back to the village to get it equipped on your new invention, the Smurfizer. And then you get to learn how to use it in the Smurfs village. I hope you mean the good kind of surprise, Handy. Remember what happened when you built those robots? Hefty has a point, Handy. You sometimes smurf inventions that you can't keep under control. And then in the next level, you get to use it on infected grass, infected plants, and try to help your smurfs friends get out of the fill leaf trap. And after one level and saving some of the residents of the Smurfs Village, you and other three Smurfs like Rainy Smurfs, Chef Smurf, and Smurfette are given the task of gathering three of the ingredients from three different locations for a stronger antidote to get rid of the giant belief from Gargamel's lair. And that is pretty much a girl you're working for. As far as the story goes, it's very basic, but it is very effective for a licensed game. And during your journey with the Smurfizers, you'll start cleaning the village up and get back control of the forest. So, as you can guess, Mission Philippe is a full-on 3D platforming game with levels laid out in a linear fashion. But it does have alternative pathways for extra collectibles or more Philippe infected plants to heal. Moves are pretty limited, but each time you clear a certain amount of levels in an area, you can unlock a new move for your character. You can move, jump, and use one of the spray attacks that is unlocked after the tutorial level. But there are more attacks and abilities you can unlock. There's the glide move, a ground pound, the dash attack, and an attack that sucks up enemies and projectiles to shoot back at them. It's not too complicated and not too simple. Just right. This game has five areas to explore with some of them having around two to three levels each. Which doesn't sound like the game has a lot to do. I mean, you're not wrong though. But you're also not right, so shove that in your nose hole. Mission Believe is a pretty short game, but it will take you around 5 to 7 hours to beat the game, even if you heal most of the areas from the Philippe. It doesn't sound like there's not a lot of content when there are a small amount of levels in each place, but with that said, each level is packed with so much to do and explore. And even if some levels are pretty much a straight line to the point where it could easily be beaten in 10 minutes, and it does have their own time to shine with their own small little areas and sections that you do in a certain way. And even if this is considered a collectathon, there is not a lot of collectibles in the games, just two types of currencies, the seeds and the ingredients. But there are also also different variants of each ingredient for each area. They're like five in total. Presents, mushrooms, bark, file, and mandrakes. But the ingredients that you collect in the game are useful for mostly upgrading your smurf isers from handy smurf. One of these upgrades are more health, more ammo storage, better handling, and longer glides. If you wanted to unlock the upgrade system, you have to save handy smurf and beat the forest area. It doesn't take too long to upgrade it, and it's cool that they allow you to upgrade your weapon. Yet sometimes you can be locked out for certain upgrades, since you don't have certain areas available until you finish all the the levels and unfortunately you can't access the last collectible until you unlock the last level of the game even after completing the entire level you can even backtrack to look for those missing collectibles yeah with this type of backtracking it could have much suck as much of a blueberry flavored ass but the good thing about that is most of the levels aren't as long as your first go when coming for those missing ingredients all the areas on your first go will have a bunch of certain leaf plants that will affect the area that you have to Clear food. And you'll have to dodge most obstacles in your way to get through. There's even like certain areas where you have to be forced in this arena fight and destroy certain enemies. But when you return to these levels, you already cleared enough of the belief affection. So repeat level playthroughs won't be a big problem when searching high low for plants to heal and extra materials to collect. There will be enemies on new populating these areas after locked in certain upgrades for the Smurfizer, but you don't always have to like fight enemies to progress. They can easily be skipped past if you're not interested. So backtracking into the old levels made it a breeze, except for a certain level in the game. There is one part in the level at Garkamez Lily where you have to run away for his life source of death so you won't get caught by him. Yet when escaping, they place infected grass and collectibles for no reason but to get you to get caught by Garkamel's LIGHT 
and if you die during this part and after going through a checkpoint, you will just lose a certain amount of progress and lose all the materials to collect. And the only thing you need to do is to respawn and try again without getting caught. This was the only part in the game that got me frustrated with backtracking for those missing collectibles. I didn't find anything that bad or frustrating as this throughout the entire game. And even if you did die and lose most of the progress, you could actually go back to the certain part of the level and try again. But this is mostly a chase section in Gargamel's Lair where you have to run away from Gargamel. Sometimes when you're in like a chase section and there's collectibles and grass that you need to like clear the amount of time, you don't have enough time to like run away from from Gargamel, and so you're gonna get caught and lose a good amount of progress and have to try it all over again. And that was just only like one out of the two complaints I have when going full completionist on this game. But not all the collectibles are required to beat the game. The grass, the leaf, hearts, and certain mushrooms are the only thing you have to hear progress throughout. The materials and the extra upgrades are only useful for make the game much easier to get through. It's like the Kirby approach, if you just don't want to use the abilities in the game and just want to get to use the projectile spish and any level, you could do that at some level without the ability. It may even beat the game much faster. Or sometimes it might actually take much longer to beat it. It's pretty much the best of wanting to cater to kids who don't play a lot of video games and the ones who know how to play games but feel extra to try to complete the game if they feel like it. If you are breezing through the entire game or gathering less collectibles and only healing a certain amount of the area, you might actually breeze through everything in around like 4 to 5 hours. But if you're like me and wanted to collect and clean the entire area, Area, you might be looking at 10 to 15 minutes per level to roughly 35 minutes you are trying to find them all. Hell, I don't even mind if the game does this. As long as I knock some Dark Souls over with the stupid hidden secret bullshit, then I can find it with no problem. I am completely okay with this type of completionist, but I can't understand if finding a collectible as easy as it isn't as interesting or rewarding as you want. But hey, there will be instances where you can actually collect certain ingredients without needing certain upgrades for them. HA! You see that? I didn't need to use that dash ability to collect that present. HA! I can even jump over here without needing to suck up all those leaves with the sucking ability. HA! You see that? I can- Oh, actually, what? Never mind. The seeds are pretty much the currency for this game. They're very much easy to collect and doesn't require much effort to collect them. The only way to collect seeds is to defeat enemies and do certain challenges in the game. The ingredients are well placed in levels that can be easy to find or require some careful movements to get them. There are also challenges that involve these felish rooms, where most of these challenges you have to spray a certain amount before the time runs out. Sometimes shoot your real projectile at certain objects to get the job done, or ground pal to get out the nasty fuck to get rid of those mushrooms that are holding your materials hostage. Most of these aren't too hard most of the time, there will be instances where you have to try a little faster, but most of these are very easy. Except for one of those challenges that are in the village that will test your patience. And oh boy, this one has tested my patience. This is one of the Smurfs videos where you had to spray the two mushrooms that are on this rock, then try to jump onto this tree with the wood platform to spray two more mushrooms, then jump to the next tree to spray four more mushrooms, and then ground pound. It may be very easy, but it has one of the most strict time limits in the entire game. And another reason why I think this is frustrating is that you have this meter for the tank and it goes down when using any move that uses the spray ammo. And it drains very fast and it takes a long time to fill up without upgrading. And you have to use this dash move to speed up because the timer is going down very fast. But you also have to do a counterclockwise on the second tree because this tree has a Philippe bomb on the side which will blow up and hurt you if you're near it. And you have to watch out for your ammo because you'll be running out of it very quickly. Quickly. And if you're spraying the mushroom and it runs out, you have to wait for the meter to get full before you can use your move or your spray again. And if the timer runs off, all the mushroom gets reset, resulting you into retrying the challenge over and over again. I've been doing this challenge for around 9 minutes trying to figure out the best strategy to heal all the mushrooms in a quick session. I did got a tank upgrade which increases the meter with few other upgrades minus a fast recharge. And I still had trouble finishing the thing. I was able to finish this, but this challenge was pretty much too difficult for me to complete while the rest of the challenge in the entire game was not that difficult as much as this one. The mushroom part was pretty much the hardest part of the challenge because you have to like use your dash move to get all four of these and like ramp at it. But you only have so much a little amount of time and before you know it, the mushrooms restart and you have to do it all over again. 
So even in that little blunder with the completionist stuff, Control and the Smurfs are actually very good and responsive, but it can get very frustrating when doing certain platforming challenges. It's not awful, but it could have been a little bit better with some fine tuning. But with the combat, it looks pretty simple, and it feels a little bit more fair. The enemies in this game are different types of Felief creatures, and you have different ways to defeat different types of enemies. Even then, using a bottle of Ray to spray a bunch of enemies doesn't really count as combat. But grabbing an enemy and spinning them around and slamming them onto the ground does sound more like combat. But you gotta remember, the Smurfs are not big brutes that have a strength of a bear. The Smurfs are small and they use their technology for combat, which they do want to showcase in this game with their enemies. I did mention most of the Smurfs moves like the Smurf Visor's spray weapon can be used to heal plants, but it's also useful in the small Philippe enemies including the big version of these guys which take the long time to eliminate. It's not reliable on all enemies. In fact, there are certain types of enemies where you had to use a grandpa move to splat them, jump on the big mushroom fleet to take down their shields, and sometimes you have this vacuum move where you can suck out and shoot an enemy and take one down after another. You can even suck up some of the projectiles to spit them back out to annihilate them as well. In fact, there's only one certain type of enemy that is only defeatable with only one move. This enemy likes to defend itself while you're spraying it, and the only way to defeat it is to suck it up Pull it back and then when you see the button, you hit it and then you see what? This vacuum move is also used for certain platforming challenges. Use this yellow sea projectile to shoot at these Philippe bridges or use it at these other yellow seas to progress on. But early on in the game, you can actually use your Smurfizer on the Philippe bridges to create short paths and move along. The combat is simple and not too tasking, but for the Smurfs, it works very well and can be good to execute. But there are certain repetitions with the enemy varieties. There are variants with the small guys like the big form I talked about. But hey, also these spiky forms would prevent you from sucking them up in the Smurf visor. But their helps are kinda much the same in the regular versions, and they can be quickly get rid of very easily. Especially there are only a couple of enemy varieties that reuse in the entire game. And by the end, the combat wasn't the best part of the entire game for me. But with that said, not every single enemy is mandatory to progress in a level. On your first go, you can even run past and keep moving along. The enemies are good for obstacle in the fighting area where you can fight each Philippe in a certain amount of rounds. Most arenas will last for one round and some will last for three rounds. Even though it feels like the fight will last for very long, it will be beaten quickly since there are used certain types of enemies for certain rounds. They are also good for collecting the CE currencies for your upgrades. Even if it serves not much purpose, if you are having a problem in a certain part of the level and need to upgrade, you you can use the season ingredients you collect in certain levels to unlock some upgrades. You may be sure on the ingredients, but you'll never be sure on the seeds since you can earn a lot during the game. It's not that the enemies are bad or very annoying to keep fighting. Most are well made and have a good amount of challenge to beat, but it can not get very repetitive every time you fight them multiple times. Although speaking of which, I haven't even mentioned about the Smurfs Village where you can start exploring it as a sandbox area. It's a small hub world where you can practice your platforming skills in the area. There's even a leaf infection that you could clear in the town. But the best part is that you can unlock different spray colors for clearing all the Philip in each area. There are like four areas to visit. The village, the fields, the square, and the luxurious Smurfs beach area. But if you really wanted to look for those extra presents and greetings, there are actually the mushroom challenges that are there as well. I mean, there is one certain challenge that I really hate. But I already mentioned that though, so I won't even bother blabbing about that again. And so, after the long mumbling about the controls, enemies, and combat, what about what happens during your adventures? Well, you start flipping between different smurfs and are stuck to that smurf until you finish a certain amount of progress in the game. You can't play with all the smurfs after unlocking all of them, but you do have to replay levels you already completed to do that, or beat the game to play any smurfs in all of the levels. And so, after Hefty Smurf got done with all of his chores, Brandy Smurf is tasked to go to the forest to find Handy Smurf. During his search for Handy, he found out that the Philippe has captured him and needs some help. And after helping Handy, you get a glide ability and head further into the woods to attain the bucket of water. 
but not just any old water. Granny Smurf went up the hill to catch a pail of water. Okay, fine, I lied. The water is up on the treetops where Brainy's friend Wild Smurf lives, who almost sounds like Yoda. <laughs> Brainy never changed. Always talking for nothing. Blue little Smurf am I? Hmm. Using the power of the force to turn myself blue, I see. Hmm. <laughs> Wild Smurfs plan this obstacle course in the treetops for Brainy to drive first. You try to get through while also clearing the contaminated plant. And at the end, you get the pail of water and head back to Papa Smurf. Chef Smurf is tasked to collect pink crystals from the chef's castle where every chef comes to make the best ingredients. <laughs> Yet, yeah, nobody is here. Nobody else is here except for the Feliz enemies. And with nobody here, it does make it feel like very eerie and scary. This is where you get to use your new abilities after clearing the forest. The dash ability. You get to test your platforming skills traversing this huge castle with bottomless pits to destroy rubble, enemies flooding the whole place and flying the air testing your gliding skills. You can also dash through these yellow collectibles and bounce to get through the obstacle. And during your adventures, you found that Greedy Smurf got caught because she was being... Uh, how do I say it? Hmm. Being too greedy. But you also found out that the cooks here were also cooking some Felif tea. Meaning everyone who was there escaped and never came back. And that means that Gargamel wasn't the only person that found out about the Felif spell. And so you get inside a castle, find the crystal, and head back to the village. But when you get back to Papa's house, Papa Smurf is not here. Just grouchy. And every Smurf is now panicking in the village because their leader has left and is in real danger. Papa Smurf is heading into the swamp all by himself just to find a flower that is in a dangerous place which might be contaminated with Felief. And so the entire Smurf's realists are starting to get into a big fight on who should go out there to find Papa Smurf. I should go out there, said Clumsy Smurf. Now nah, I should go there, said Brainy. And then everyone else keep arguing. But while everybody was getting into a fight, the Smurf Riser was left unguarded, and so Smurfette sneaks in and swaps a gizmo and heads to the swamp to find Papa Smurf and to find the flower ingredient. Tyre Fairs even found out that Smurfette left because of Grouchy seeing her leave. So you explore through the mucky swamp, platforming through the deep water without falling. You get a chance to use the new move that Hefty added to the Smurfizer, the suck and shoot abilities for the platforming challenges. Yet even if Smurf's bath was the only Smurf that came to rescue Papa, somewhere else is also lurking through the swamp looking for ingredients and some Smurfs that might even got caught in the Philippe trap. And judging by the amounts of these items laying around in the forge and how big they are, that can only be one thing. Gargamel! And you can even see him wandering around the swamp, looking menacing, scary due to how small you are. And yet, your immersion is pretty much broken due to the look of the skyboxes in the area, making it look like you're in a Windows XP background. But man, this is the most important part of the entire game. Look how small you are, and look how big Gargamel is. Yeah, you're pretty much a full-on talented smurf, but you are pretty much a weak, weak little gremlin over that big, gigantic troll. You finally found Papa Smurfs, who is trapped in the Philip. And you'll have to destroy the fleet traps and free him before Gargamel does. And after you free him, you try to get over to Papa Smurf. You go platforming, you try to cross this big huge gap, and then... And man, you're pretty much alive and still okay, but look at this. Your ammo falling off and you have to get it back before Gargamel finds you. But don't worry, Papa Smurf is safe and sound. And he'll try to catch up to you and meet you back at the village. And now, you're on your own. The third and final swamp level is a good example to show how good your platforming skill is without your smurf Icer ability. You'll be jumping from small wood boats, soaking through the leaf infected grass, running past enemies, and bouncing off the shrooms until you get top of the end of the level and grab the ammo that has fallen out of your smurf Icer. Also, I actually noticed that the victory theme that plays when you clear all the Philippe or run away from the battle has a weird audio glitch where the music plays twice at the same times while in the swamp area. Turn up the volume and have a listen so you know what I mean. I don't know how it just does it or why it just has a glitch. But wait a second, 
There's one ingredient missing, the flour. What about the flour? Well, no need to worry. Papa Smurf said he actually found the flowers perfume before getting caught. Papa Smurf and Smurfette head back to the village. Papa Smurf finished the antidote, and he chose Hefty Smurf to finish the job. And now, it's time to head to his lair to save all the captured Smurfs and defeat Garkamel once and for all. Man, these levels in the final area is the perfect way to show how small and weak you are while in Garkamel's dangerous lair. You'll see your friends hanging in small cages while he starts cooking some ingredients for a more powerful spell for the Thalif. This place is dark and uneasy while traversing. You also have to be careful not to get caught by Gargamel as he knows your whereabouts later on. Well, if you can be careful and not fuck up because these stupid mushrooms and fleet getting in the way you're running from it! So you traverse the first part of the lair, release some of your friends, find his spell book, Try to spray the Falief hearts to destroy the dangerous spell and RUN AWAY! Gargamel is very anxious to find you and stop you from thwarting his plans. Thwarting? I can't say thwarting. It's so hard, man. It's so hard. And even if you don't get to fight him, you do pretty much got to keep your on your smurfy butt alive from him. Well, yeah, from the entire game, I haven't even mentioned anything about boss fights anywhere. But there is a reason why. There is actually no boss fights in this game. There is no fleet monster that you have to fight anywhere, or even fight Ariel and Gargamel's crow in the game. The only thing you do at the end of most levels is fight a bunch of enemies to start spraying the Thalif hearts. But the game doesn't really have to have loads of boss fights for each area. They can have just like one or two boss fights and it would still work for the game. I mean come on, the old Asterix and Obelix games actually do have a couple of boss fights. In fact, some of them are actually repeated throughout the entire game. And even some of them only have one boss fight, and that's the final boss of the entire game. It's just because of this omission of boss fights that the final level of the game is not that unique for a level. It kinda does remind me of the final level of Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. You traverse through a gauntlet, avoiding obstacles, defeating enemies, testing your platforming skills, and lastly destroying the monster of least heart at each segment. It's not that the level is bad or anything, in fact, this one's a really good final level. It's just that without boss fights in the game, the level is not really as exciting as Battle for Bikini Bottom's final boss. Boss. In that game, you actually get to fight the final boss of the entire game. Well, aside from like cheating. And then during the run for the level, you're getting attacked by Robot Plankton for the whole fight, and you have to stun him to strike any damage to the robot. As compared to Mission Fleet, it would have made the victory defeating the Fleet much more memorable in my opinion. In fact, you could actually still have Gargamel chase you in the attic, still trying to catch you and send out his enemies to defeat you. And the only way to get rid of him is to like spray some of that weird looking yellow projectile at him. And I would bet you that this addition will actually make the final level much more better than how it was in the entire game. And so, after defeating the monster Fleet in Gargamel's lair, all the Smurfs celebrated a victory with fireworks while Gargamel is coping in his defeat. And then, roll credits. And oh boy do I still love it. Ah, Mission Philippe. A really fun Smurfs game. But it's just an underrated masterpiece that everyone should go on and get themselves a copy because this is not getting enough attention, but it should because it is the best Smurfs game that I ever made! No! But also yes, because it's great. <sighs> okay, no, it's not even a flawless masterpiece, far from it. It even got some rough edges that will make people not want to pick this up. But with this being said, Osame Studios did a great job with the first Smurfs project, and the Smurfs did a great job as their first 3D platformer game. Right now, we have seen a resurgence of licensed games from different companies after the late 2010s have been really bad for them. Yeah, you still have some awful disasters being released as of today. But right now, we are getting more fun licensed games from properties that we never expected coming from them. Mikoroids, you should start getting your studios more money and more people to work on certain projects. And if you play your cards right with the right games that are actually good, you might actually start getting more attention with your original licensed games. Right now, there are like four publishers I know who are publishing licensed games. Warner Brother Games, Outright Games, Mikoroids, and the big one, THQ Nordic. Mikoroids has a good amount of licenses under their belt, but they have not been using them to the fullest potential on a perfect game genre they fit very well with. Like party games. Why so many party games? And more remakes? I can understand wanting to get people play the classic game in a new way, 
But what's the point if the remake is just gonna be inferior to the originals? Or most importantly, just the same as the original? Most of the time, platform is just gonna be better for most of these IPs. Most can get away with racing games, and some could work with another genre as a shooting game. And let's be honestly fair here. Garfield's lasagna party. Everyone has sarcastically enjoyed Garfield Cut because of how boring garbage it is. Even Fury's Waging is only a little better because of the multiplayer edition, including online play. But that's just it. Yeah, I am on a tangent. Even with some properties, most will get a genre of a game that could fit very well with them, but it could turn out very bad. Yet with the Smurfs, I think they pull out much better than I thought they did. I do hope someday that in the future, Osami Studios is working on a sequel that can iron out all the kinks of the first game had. And hey, who knows, maybe soon more licensed games from Mickey Royce will get more exciting licensed games later in the future. Most of these are not yet there since these properties are not as big in America like Spongebob, Scooby-Doo, Batman, Bugs Bunny, and maybe even like, um, the Fairy Odd pair. But you can check out the Smurfs' first ever 3D adventure. The game is available on multiple platforms and now $20 on digital platforms like Steam. So you don't have to just make an excuse to not play it. I'm Luke Salmon and I hope you'll shine brighter than anyone you know. And have a great day. Uh, huh? Uh, what is it? Wait, what? They already announced a sequel? Wait, wh where did you hear this? The Game Awards Twitter account announced- ah! Um, so today I went to the grocery store and I bought some ramen and stuff, you know. And I went up to the cashier and he just looks at me and he's like, why are you getting ramen? And he just shoves carrots in my ass. He just shoves carrots in my fucking ass. Oh my god. Oh. 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 Oh.